weeks, we've had some very beautiful conversations. Uh, remember, we are talking about Jesus, the great I am. You remember? And it's been a very beautiful journey for us to go through what John tells us about Jesus describing himself, the great I am. So uh, last week, what did we talk about last week? Does anyone remember? Jesus is who? The? Okay, let's start again. The way? And? Yes. And the Sunday before that, we talked about Jesus, the resurrection and the life. And then before then, we talked about Jesus the good shepherd. And today we are going to John chapter 15, if you don't mind. Uh, John chapter 15, if you don't mind, please go there. Uh, but we are going to put the scripture on the screen. John chapter 15, we are going to, uh, the passage is 1 to 10, verse 1 to verse 10. I'm going to paraphrase it because I'll keep uh, mentioning a few of those verses uh, together. You know, John chapter 15, from verse 1, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. So really the title of our message today is that Jesus is the true vine. That's the title of our message today. You know, he says that every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. But every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes and it may, that it may bear more fruit. Verse 3, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you. Okay? As the branch cannot bear, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is, it is he that bears much fruit. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my father will be glorified. Verse 9, and as the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. May God use this word to encourage us today in Jesus' name. And God, his people say, Amen. Amen. Now, as we talked about last week, these chapters all happened in the same night. Chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17. There were multiple, multiple chapters all happening one evening. And this is the evening before Jesus is going to be betrayed and later on going to the cross. So they're very, very, very important. Now, Jesus is talking to these men and women. Okay, this time it was men. He's talking to them and he's preparing them for the time that he's, going, no, he's not going to be around. Jesus is leaving them a big task and the task is to evangelize the whole world. To be his instruments of change around the world. So it is a very important thing for us to actually receive this. Because when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus also planned a big mission for your life. That's why Gaba Church has got a vision statement. You remember that? Christ-like people doing what? Transforming society. When we are saved, we are saved not to just enjoy life. We are saved that we will go out there and be a light, be the feet, be the life that Jesus can share with other people. So that is very, very important. So now let's go back to this passage of scripture. Jesus is saying, I am the vine and you are the branches. So the best way to understand this is to think about a tree. Now Jesus lived in a place where the, the grapes were very important. You know, vines were very, very big to them. But when we start thinking about it, as people here in Uganda, I think we need to think about a big tree that bears fruit. And you know, the trees that we always think about, we think about a mango tree, don't we? 
We think about an orange tree. We think about fene. What do we call fene in English? We think about a jackfruit. Uh, by the way, guest, make sure you test a jackfruit before you leave this country. You will be amazed. True? So, this is a tree. What tree is this now? <laughs> it's a it's a fat or a wide tree. Okay. So it's probably an orange, but it has been magnified. So when you look at a tree, it has a big trunk and it has branches, and the fruit always comes from the branches. So when we think about a tree, just think like this. What Jesus is teaching is like the father is the owner of the garden. Jesus is the trunk of this big tree. And we are the branches that bear the fruit that he's talking about. And Jesus speaks and teaches in this passage. And he says a branch must stay connected to the main trunk in order to be fruitful. That's what Jesus is teaching. And he's saying that if a branch does not bear fruit or is fruitless, it is cut off because it's like useless. If it bears fruit, the master or the owner of the tree works more on this tree, so on this branch, so that it produces more and it does what we call pruning. So now, let's talk about bearing fruit. He says he wants this plant to bear fruit, but he's also talking to us. Jesus wants us to bear fruit. So what does this fruit mean for us Christians today? I believe it means two things. The first one is to bear fruit, uh, to bear Christ-like character. If you bear Christ-like character, then you are a fruitful Christian. To become like Jesus, that's what it means. When we accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us and it starts doing a work in our lives. And that work starts doing stuff in us. There are things we used to do and to, we used to be that are not pleasing to God. So what God does is to challenge us to change them. And over time, when people look at us and say, oh, so-and-so is different. Why? Because something inside of them happened. They are changed. So we call it bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Now, the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, actually tells us the fruit that comes out of a person who actually is living and walking with Jesus. One of them, they have love. They are joyful. They are peaceful. People like that are patient. They are kind. He's, he calls the fruit goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when people see you, do they see the fruit of being a Christian? Do you remember the Christians in the book of Acts? They saw them and saw them and saw them. And they said, these people are like Christ. So, that's why they named them Christians. So, I want you to look at your neighbor and help me. Ask them, do people see Jesus in you? Someone talked about people who are so dangerous that they're, they're like caterpillars. When they are near you, they always burn you. You know, caterpillars here burn, don't they? They burn. I hope you're not a caterpillar today because you are a child of God. Hallelujah. So, Christ-like character. The other way we bear fruit is by fruitful service. So, one is the way we live and the second, what we do as we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this passage is very important when we relate to this. Because remember, Jesus is leaving these guys. 
and his mission for them was that the whole world will know that God is God and that Jesus is the Savior. These are 12 guys. They are simple people. Some of them were tax collectors. Others were fishermen. They were not uh, well situated in normal common life. But they had a mission. The mission was to change the world. So he's saying, you are going to become my ambassadors. You are going to help me or work with me to expand my kingdom. Now, I would like you to remember that that is your mission too. When you got saved, God has a purpose for your life. God has a desire for your life. God wants you to be a blessing to your community. God wants Gaba Community Church to be a blessing to our community, to our city, to our country, to our continent, and to the rest of the world. But also God wants that to happen to you as an individual. So, what God is saying, that I want you to be fruitful by bearing my character, but also by providing fruitful service. There's a great harvest out there. There are people, thousands of people, who need to know and to have what you have. They are always looking. And God is saying, I want you to be effective. And the only way you can is to actually be connected to me. Okay. So, and he tries to explain it so deeply. And he says it in verse 5. Whoever abides in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, we are going to read this together, okay? It's, uh, it's in the New King James Version. Can we say this verse, word, uh, this uh, portion together? One, two, three, I am. And? Yes. And? For? Okay, I would like to repeat the last one. For without me, you can do nothing. Can we say it together? Without me, you can do nothing. So what Jesus was saying, I am sending you out. But what I am sending you to do, humanly, you cannot do. You cannot do. Why? I'm sending you to a very big mission. It is too big for you. You have an enemy who is so strong. If he has disturbed the Jesus, he will disturb you. I'm sending you to do something which is too costly. It will require supernatural power. It will require the wisdom of God to succeed in the endeavor that I'm calling you to do. And friends, he's saying, because I'm sending you to something that I know which is bigger than you, you need me and you can't do without me. Now, don't you see even in living normal life as a Christian today, it's not very easy, isn't it? What is the price of fuel today? Petrol. How much is petrol this last week? 2,000? 3,000? Okay, I'm sorry. 6,000, 400, almost 500. In my lifetime, I have never heard of that price. Has anyone ever heard of that price? It is so expensive that I wonder how people can live. The other day, I was buying Porsche. And I found that the cost of Porsche was 6,000 shillings 
no, uh, 3,000 shillings something. I think 3,500. Is it 3,500 or 3,800? And I said, this is the highest price of Porsche I've ever seen. It is almost as expensive as sugar. I can't understand. What about you people in business? Can you get a loan in the bank to invest in your business and survive? Most people, the banks will take their stuff. So you look around and you say, how do people survive? And what I found, that today, the people who do not know their God, they go on cheating, they go on lying, they go on deceiving. Now this last week, no, two weeks ago, we went and ordered a machine. This machine cuts grass to make into what, to, to help you make into what we call silage because we have some animals in my village. So we went and ordered the machine and they told us the machine is going to come in seven days. It ended up coming in about three weeks. So then we go to pick the machine and what the man had done, he had got an old engine to put on the machine and he had painted it very well. So we looked at it and said, this engine looks old. He said, no, 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 no. This is a very new machine. We said, it looks rusted. He says, no. You know, these machines take so long in the storage. So they actually have those rusts. But the machine is new. I'm actually giving you a one-year warranty. So we took the machine. In five days, the machine was dead. So I called the man and I said, what happened? And I told him, don't you know that I'm, your, I'm, I'm a customer for you for the first time? Do you know that I can buy a few more machines in the future? Don't you know that I can tell other people about you? Why did you do that? And this is what I found. Because he doesn't know Jesus, he has not born Christ-like character and he thinks he can lie his way around the world. And friends, you're competing with those kinds of people who cheat their way to success. But I want you to know this today, that Jesus is saying, you will actually live on this planet if you realize that without me, you can do nothing. But with me, all things are possible. <laughs> Glory be to God. He's saying that you need me to live and to succeed on this planet. You need me because I have the keys to your breakthrough. I have the keys to the strategies that will get you through this task. Because you are a child of God, you will do business in God's way. Can I say, can I hear an amen from God's people? Now friends, there is something else we want to say. That we find in this portion. When we go to this passage, there is something quite interesting. And what we find is that there is a word that Jesus kept repeating. Now, in all these passages, we found Jesus repeating a few things. But this one, in this passage, he repeats the word abide. Interestingly, he says it so many times. He says, abide in me in verse 4. Okay? And then he says, unless you abide in me again in verse 4. And then he says in verse 5, whoever abides in me. Okay? Then we go on to verse 7, if you abide in me. And then he says, and my, my words abide in you. We go to verse 9, and the Father has loved, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Verse 10, if you keep my command, you will abide in my love just as my father's commandments and abide in his love. I was counting the number of times that Jesus used the word abide and I found that he said it 10 times. Do you think that Jesus was out of words to be able to repeat one word multiple times? No. No. He wanted to say something to us who are believers. So that's why he said, abide, 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 abide. 
And I was asking myself, what does abide mean? It means to remain attached, to stay connected to Jesus, to hold on to him just like he's holding on to his father. He's saying, I'm the trunk. You are the branches. Your survival depends on me. Your nutrients come from the trunk. Your water comes from the trunk. You cannot thrive without being connected to the trunk. And Jesus is the trunk. So Jesus is telling these guys, I know the task is big. I know the enemy is nasty and evil. I know the cost is so high. I know the geographical size of the mission that I've called you to. And he says, you will need my wisdom. You will need my energy. You will need my provision. You will need my power. You will need my anointing to do the mission that I called you to do. So now the question is, what does it mean to abide? What does it mean to abide in Jesus? What does it mean? Now he has given us an illustration. But I was thinking about a man called John. Now John is the writer of John, the Gospel of John, from which we get this very passage. Do you remember John? He was called John the Beloved. Wherever Jesus was, John was there. When he sat to eat, John made sure he takes the place number one. Wherever Jesus went, he was there. He was a disciple who was so close to Jesus. So this is what I found. If you want to abide, you need, be, you need to be present where God is present. Can we say presence? Yes. Where he is, just be there. Be there. And one of the ways we do that is through prayer. What I've found is that many, many times we think that prayer is asking for things. You remember? Many, many parents, we always have kids who do that. You know, when he needs something, you see him coming or her coming. And when you get them something, they get lost. When they have another need, they always come. So their relationship is based on what you get. Can you ask your neighbor, is that you? Is that you? I hope it's not you. I hope it's not you. Because let me tell you this. What Jesus was saying, if you are going to get anything from me, if you are going to enjoy my relationship, you need to be where I am. So this is what I want to request us to be. Can you become a friend of God? Can you love to be in the presence of God? And it is as simple as waking up and say, before I start my day, I need to have a conversation with the master. And I say, Lord, thank you for this day. As I begin this day, I want to hand over everything to you today. That's, that's real prayer, by the way. Lord, I want to enjoy you today. I want to fellowship with you. And some of you drive. As you drive to the city, going to work, usually we have long, long distances or short distance with lots of traffic. As you are there, can you just keep talking to God? Can you mention some of the things that you feel about God? What about when you are out there in the office and you're alone and you're, you're just in task and you don't know what to do. Say, God, can you give me some wisdom on this? And when you get back home before you go to bed, can you just tell the, the father and say, oh, it has been a great day today. Thank you for all these things. Lord, I got angry with so and so, but Lord, can you please forgive me? Can you? It's like having a conversation with God. But you know, some of us are so rough on God. You come to prayer and you are so mad and wild. And uh, Let me leave that for, for tomorrow. Praise be to God. But sometimes God wonders at this. Are they my kids or are they soldiers? Are you a kid? Can you love on him? You know, John was that very beautiful example of abiding. He was present 
where Jesus was. But also I'm reminded about another woman. Her name is Mary. Do you remember Mary? Mary was a sister to Martha. We talked about her last week. So whenever Jesus visited by their home, she made sure she's present where Jesus was. And whenever Jesus was talk, teaching, she said, you know what? I know this man rarely passes by our home, but I want to get everything out of him. Let me hear what he has to say. So she would sit down and listen to all the conversation that God had to say. And you know, when I read this portion, this is something that Jesus said very well. In the passage that we read, he talked about his word. He says this, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish. So he says that his words are very important. And what God has decided is to speak to us here. So when you start making a friend of what he says, God will actually enjoy talking to you and speaking to you. I pray that you become a friend of what God says in his word. Hallelujah. Now let me ask you a tough question. Do you have a Bible? I'm not going to ashamed us because if I ask you to put up your Bible, you may have forgotten it home. Or you may not have one. But if you don't have, can you please get one? And if you don't have this physical one, can you get one on your phone? Because we need his word. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Yes. Yes. There is something interesting about abiding. Abiding is also about worship. You know, these days I'm very, very impressed or surprised by young men. And young ladies too. They put things in their ears. They used to have wires, but these days they're wireless. So they put something here and another thing here. Do you see some people like that? So someone walks on the street and is just putting those things on. So sometimes I'm driving out of my, comp, out of my little road and there is someone in, ahead of you and you're driving and they don't hear you. And you reach where they are. They don't hear you. They have put so many things in their ears that they don't even hear what is going on behind them. So I want to ask you young men and women today, what do you listen to? Amen. What do you listen to? My prayer is that we will listen to the things that glorify God. My prayer is that you put some worship music in your ears. Because let me tell you this, when you raise worship in your heart and your mind, the presence of God exists where praise and worship is. The Bible says it dwells. Thank you very much. The Bible says it dwells in the praises of God is people. I pray that you will shower your heart, your mind, your brain with the things that glorify your God. Amen. Now friends, that's what abiding is. Now, there is something quite interesting. He says in verse 2, every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear much fruit. Can we say pruning? So Jesus is interesting in bearing so much fruit. He loves abundance. He loves to do big and great things in us and through us. More to Jesus is good. Winning more souls to Jesus is good. Blessing and helping more people is good. Doing services of good is good. Bearing more fruit of character is good to God. Now, like a farmer, every farmer. You know, Pastor Fred here is the coffee farmer here. He always teaches us a lot of things. But what I've found, if you want your coffee to produce the best, you get those extra little branches off. That, that food is not wasted. It will go into bearing more fruit. And I was asking myself, what could this mean in this passage? And this is what I found. There are things that look good, because usually those little branches look good, but they are not the best for you. Can I tell you some of the little branches we need to prune? Some of us, we love football, 
but we over love football. Can you smile? Some of us love soaps. These days we have those which are Mexican, Filipino, Chinese, Indian, and then Luganda. These days the Luganda comedy too, isn't it? Some of you, you love Man U, Chelsea. Can you tell me others? Arsenal, what else? Liverpool, all kinds of things. To such an extent that your brain is crowded with all things. And the problem we have is that when we are so crowded, with, we don't have space for the word of God. We don't have space for prayer. We don't have space for good service. Because you come from one match to the other match to the other match to the other match. One time they were putting on a, a, little, a little ad on TV. Someone got so excited that when something happened which he did not like, he actually struck a TV and he broke the TV. I mean... Can you imagine someone is playing soccer inside his sitting room? Can you tell your neighbor, can you prune something? Prune something. Prune. Some of these things are people. Some of us have so many friends that some of the friends we have are, I don't want to call them useless, but they are almost useless, but they are not helpful. Have you had friends who are, they talk, 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 talk. They waste all your time, talk, talk, talk. Everyone is smiling because you have some of those. Now, I hope you are not that friend, okay? But you have another friend. So, you may have to prune some friends. And the way you prune them, you say, you know what? You talk, but you don't overspend the time. Because you know what? You are supposed to be fruitful. You have a big mission, can we stand up, children of God? Stand up like the third service. Hallelujah. Now, verse 7 is where we are ending as we are going to pray right now. And this is what verse 7 says. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. Now, believers, we love to ask, don't we? Amina. The problem is, this is all we do. We don't do all the other things. The very interesting thing, this was the last thing Jesus was saying. He was saying, do you know what? If you abide in me, if you stay connected to me, ask and everything will be done. And the best way to put it is this way. That prayer should not be about asking. Fellowship and being with Jesus is more important. Because before you pray, he knows what you need. Hallelujah. He's interested in all things. But he says, you know what? Can you be interested in the things I'm interested in? I'm interested in my relationship with you. I'm interested in my fellowship with you. I'm interested in my mission that I'm sending you to. But these, by the ways, I can take care of them. But this is what I want you to learn about prayer. There's a young man who came to visit me. Not long. No, it's actually about 10 years ago. He came to visit my house. I was home and someone said, so-and-so wants to talk to you. So I went and, and he greeted me. And after greeting me, he said, Pastor, I need some help. And his help was school fees. And I smiled. I said, by the way, where do you go to church? He said, I go to Gaba Church. I said, did you go to church on Sunday? He said, yes, I did. Do you really go there? He said, yes. So then I asked him, when is the last time you said hello to me at church? I couldn't remember and he could not remember. So then I asked him, what about my home? When is the last time you visited me? He couldn't remember and I couldn't remember. But when he had issues, he remembered me. So can I be very blunt? Do you think I helped him? 
because I say, this young man doesn't love me. He just loves my money. And I think God has a problem with many of us. You say, I went and I prayed. And I prayed. And those things don't work. Me, I tried. And I even went to this place. And I prayed. And then you say, those things don't work. Do we say that? And God says, are you my friend? Jesus is asking, do you really love me? Are you interested in me or you're interested in my things? If you are happy and you know, say amen. Can we close our eyes? Oh, you wanted to sing a song? Okay, Chris. Okay. Chris wants to lead us in a song. All right. And he's. Jagara Kubera Woli. Jagara Kubera Woli. Yes, Jagara Kubera Woli. Jagara Kubera Woli. Jagara Kubera talk to God as an individual some of us the prayer is God help me to hear your voice that I will change the way I live and the way I behave that I'll bear the fruit of a Christ like character some of us it is saying God I don't want to waste my life. I want my life to bear fruit. Fruitful service. And that should be a prayer for all of us. But many, some of us, God is saying that it's something you need to prune. Something you need to get rid of and let go. That Jesus will make you more fruitful time wasters focus wasters things that waste your life and time Jesus will you do a deeper work of grace in our lives today Lord we want to be fruitful we pray Father that you will continue working in our lives if it is pruning, will you prune us, God? Prune us, Lord, that we will bear more fruit, God. 
the Lord. There's a world out there that needs us, Lord. Help us to see, to feel what you feel about those people, God. And Lord, many of us have been worried about our needs, but you told us not to worry. We just need to abide. Lord, I pray that we learn how to abide. Father, we pray that you help us through this. Encourage us, Lord. But this will not just stay here, but it will be a message that will change our lives and the lives of the people that we interact with. So, Lord, we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. And God is people say, God is people say, Amen, Amen. Uh, please take your seats for a moment. Please take your seats for a moment. Uh, I want to ask a question. You may have come to Gaba Church today and you've heard this message, but you're not yet saved. You've not yet given your personal life to Jesus. He's not yet your master. He's not yet your king. And you say, today I want Jesus to be the Lord and the master of my life. If you're there and you want Jesus to be your savior, you would like to be saved. You would like your sins to be forgiven. You would like to walk with Jesus the rest of your life. You want to bear those fruits. It starts with you saying yes to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I did that so many years ago and it changed my life. And most of us here, we did that. We asked Jesus to be our Savior. But also, you may be here and you say, Pastor, I used to walk with Jesus. But somehow I became lazy, I became weak, I started, I've not been living the life of fruitfulness that I wanted. But today, I want to recommit my life to Jesus. So if you are one of those, just put up your hand. We want to pray as we finish this service today. You want to be saved. You want Jesus to change your life. Just put up your hand. We will pray with you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there someone else? If there's someone else, you say, I want Jesus. I want to change. I want him to change. If you happen to be there, just put up your hand if you, you want to join him. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another one? Amen. Let's clap to Jesus for this guy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Now, I know that there are some people who may be shy and you've not. It's hard to put up the hand. Can we just close our eyes and pray together? Can we? Let's join this gentleman. But also, if you're there and you have been shy, can you pray as you mean this? I'm going to lead this prayer. Church, can we join these guys and this, this gentleman? Can we? Can we say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I thank you because you are the Savior. I ask you to save me, to forgive my sins, and to change my life. Today I confess you as my Lord, my Savior, and my Master. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A big hand clap to Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, so there are people that we gave cards, our guests, besides the American guests, but our guests who came that we gave you cards. Uh, we want one of our pastors who would like to speak to you and our friend, uh, Kathy, Kathy, can you put up your hand? So those people we gave cards and our friend who has just prayed this prayer. At the end of this service, Kathy will go up, 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 up. We have a big room there. We call it the green room. We'd like you to go. One of our pastors is going to come talk to you and tell you more about Gaba Church. Praise the Lord. So let us, um, let us hear the news. Let us get to see the news and then we'll leave this house today. Hello, Gaba Church family. Thank you for joining us in our celebration services. Whether you're online or you're joining us in person, we are so glad that you're here. A lot of great and amazing things are happening here at Gaba Community Church. Here are just a few.
to stay connected with what is going on, follow us on our social media platforms, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit our website, gabachurch.org. There are so many opportunities for you to grow, connect, and stay rooted in Christ. So don't do life alone. Be a part of what is happening in our fellowships and events. kama ye bazibwe abo luganda mu Yesu um amanya gange nze sinfu ma angelo pita bangi bamanyinga enjo nasomera wano ku manata schools elana limu compassion international fetwaji tanga gaba child development center ug501 yisere ebyo nina abana babili mwala bamuita kairo ine uh, miaka 5 mulenzi bamuita modikai I name Yaki Satu. But never saw my school. Mutu twenty twenty Nachizuba Nachizula and Evanzula, which ran the show much of it at the CMP. If you sing a young team of Wanga Yagas war, Navy Folk have been a fool or caller a medium Jago, So you Lord, which way is that Chibumba? Nifuna na mazimu ruto, nienzi mbebi gede, nifu na signs za cardiac arrest ina nyingi nyo. Mbela ya antabu kako, mbomu kaga, mbomu vili guga anidagala. Guys, not responding to medicine. Na ye jivade mikuano, okubamu 2020 paka nekakati. Ezibade ze sonda musente, eze dagala, ezo kudaba abasawo, is that tapping of whose come on as a Muruto, a land of Musanifu, a land seaman, New Jevali, and better way at Tabuka, the vampage tandem, Mulago, Okuba Mugomuka, Gapaka Nekakat, in the Kuchitanda, Naye to Ebuza Purasawa, Abako, India, the Vada of Empapula Zange, Nevangamba, Tomutuma Guange, Guetakama, Levi's, Levita ICD, Graban to be controlling that irredeemable go. Batu Gamma and Cheta Giza and Twalo Jack Dola, a town of Winkumi Satomoro Nana, Nijon Zingabi Vidi. Nanze Angels in Sobola, Cicero Tangapo, Nae, a Mikuano, Juvu de Yokunia, Bamuchino, the Stankawa campaign, Vaita Save the Life, the Batekawa Car Wash, again the Kuera and Kugawa Community Church, the Abidi Munia, no Mues. To Saba Murete Motokazamwe, Murete Boda Boda, Murete Ugali, Mkwano Janga, the Jose, to the twenty two to two presidential of Chino, Mfune, Embele, and Pia, Zedemunang and Kore, a little to be angry. Toyans is a Rumo, and a Gata Mumanga Guno, and a two just see my new, nobody knew, nobody done, Mukama Bampe Romosa. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today. We are Christ-like people transforming society.